Welcome to Sex Ed with DB. I'm your host, DB. Let's get into it. In a world that constantly encourages you to change, it's bold to just be yourself. Sexual expression and satisfaction are different for everybody, so rather than conforming to others, focus on falling in love with who you are. Lion's Den sources the very best products to help you find what you like and help you feel confident expressing your sexual desires. You can get 15% off in-store and online using code SEXEDWITHDB at lionsden.com to begin exploring everything about yourself. Follow them on social at Lion's Den Adult on Instagram and TikTok. When it comes to anal sex, what comes to mind? If you're a beginner like so many of us out there, maybe you feel scared, unsure, or just plain uneducated. Future Method can help with that. Founded by a doctor and anal sex expert, Future Method develops science-backed products and non-judgmental doctor-led education to maximize pleasure, eliminate injury, and empower the way people choose to play in the bedroom. They even have a blog started by the gay community and now for everyone that puts education at the forefront on topics both popular and taboo. Use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at futuremethod.com. Finally, we can travel again. If you're like me, I bet you want a little pleasure while you're away, but can't fit your entire sex toy collection in your carry-on, huh? Say hello to the Magic Wand Mini. Born into such a famous family, this little wand has quite a reputation to uphold. Challenge accepted. Offering big power, multiple speeds, and unsurpassed quality, the full-featured Magic Wand Mini is more than simply a smaller sibling. It's here to create a legacy all its own. Want to win a Magic Wand Mini for your next trip or staycation? Go to sexedwithdb.com slash magicwand to learn more. When you're traveling, you don't have access to your amazing sex goodies stash. So you start to pack your lube for sexy time in your toiletry bag. And when you open your bag back up, the lube you packed, of course, spills all over your toothbrush, makeup, and floss picks. Enter a brand new product from Uber Lube that will get your lube to your destination without spillage. They're new good to go travelers. Perfect for your purse, pocket, gym bag, or carry on luggage. The good to go traveler features the same Uber Lube product in a discreet aluminum traveler that comes in six colors. Try Uber Lube and their good to go traveler now with code SEXED with DB for 15% off at uberlube.com. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, and you may know me from social media where I spend a lot of my time educating about everything reproductive health. This podcast is called Let's Talk About Down There, and that's what I'm doing. I am talking about down there with no shame, no stigma, a lot of fun, and a lot of education. And why? Because when we talk about these things, we educate and we empower ourselves. Call in, leave a question, and know that it's okay to have questions about your body, and we're going to answer them. Hello, folks. How's everyone doing today? Happy, happy, happy Wednesday. Today, we have an amazing guest on. I hope that you love his energy and his pizzazz just as much as I did. His name is Alex Hall, and he is the creator of the Bottoms Digest. And we get all into anal sex and bottoming and talking about what foods to eat or not to eat potentially, depending on your body before bottoming. And we dispel a couple of really important myths around bottoming. And I think that for me as a sex educator, it was really, really important to hear this from Alex, who is a gay man, who is an amazing chef, and who is someone who has been tinkering with over 60 recipes at this point when it comes to things to eat before bottoming and just just around the idea that everyone should and can be enjoying food even when it comes to having sex and having anal sex. And I just think it was a really illuminating episode. So I hope you really enjoy it. Before we get into that, just want to remind you all about the Curious Sex Ed episodes. And if you want to ask uh, an anonymous sex ed question, check out our link tree 
And if you want to support us, check out buymeacoffee.com slash curious sex ed. And if you like this episode uh, and you can't buy me a coffee, I really, really hope that you'll consider sharing it with a friend. Uh, Even right now, you can pause me and you can click the copy link and share it with somebody who you think would also really like this episode because sharing it helps increase our audience and gets the word out. So I hope you'll consider doing that. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you enjoy this amazing episode with Alex Hall. Alex, welcome to the podcast. What's up? (laughs) Hey, I'm so happy to be here. I love you so much. So I'm so stoked. The feeling is very (laughs) mutual. We are pretty new, but close, tight friends, I would say already. Yes. Yes. There are people that you meet from the internet and sometimes you're just kind of like, I want to be friends with this person. They seem very fun and cool and hip and nice. And I want to know you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. I'm like, (laughs) I feel the same about you. It's just that smile. You know, you got that smile. That's just like, it's so welcoming. And it's like, I still can't believe you lived in New York because people in New York just don't smile as much as you. (laughs) Because there are many rats and that we're very sad yeah. about there, and the weather's sometimes shitty. Uh, but yeah. yeah, New York, that's interesting. Yeah, I find that my time in New York, and I'm a New Yorker, like I was born and raised on Long Island, though, not the city, not a city kid, like a cool kid. I like kid. that you threw that in there. You have to. You can't <laughs> You can't say that you have city cred when you don't. Uh, yeah, but, people will pull that out. Yes, but yeah, I think that I'm a pretty friendly sarcastic New Yorker, I would say. That's how it, and you're kind of a friendly, sarcastic Southerner. Yeah. um, I'm from Houston and um, Houston has its own reps. And I would say that um, I am totally the bless your heart kind of gal. Um, So, you know, like shady sound bites that no one really, everyone's like, oh my God, he's so sweet. I'm like, you didn't even listen to what I was (laughs) <laughs> so so thank you for that um we'll take nice today we'll take we'll that. take nice we'll take sweet uh why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the masses tell people who you are and what the hell it is that you do here uh work absolutely so my name is alex hall i'm the host of the bottoms digest um the bottoms digest is my food channel where i teach you all things anal really especially about how to eat before engaging in anal sex but Um, It really has stemmed from my background of lots of careers that I've had. Um, I've been working in reproductive rights as a graphic and web designer, as well as a video editor for the last five years. I'm actually still in the reproductive rights movement um, currently. And before that, I was a bartender at queer clubs and bars. Oh, no Um, That's cool. Yeah. So in a way, I was kind of hosting the club all night. Right. And... Uh, I think that's where I really learned how to speak a lot of queer lingo as well. And um, I really learned how to vibe and work with drag queens a lot and serving customers, right? Uh, The best skill, honestly. Um, That's like talk about survival skills. (laughs) And But I've always loved to cook more than anything. I've cooked every single day for... probably like two decades now i'm 30 years old yeah i i just love it my whole family loves to cook Mm. i was always taught this i i've eaten out so few times in my life for real um so that's kind of where the bottom side just is like this intersection of my past as a bartender my love for cooking my love for body autonomy and reproductive rights and fighting for it and you know the bottom side just is really just like it's I, I don't want to be too political, but it is a political movement in itself because it is meeting the moment with sex ed and combating a lot of crap out there. Yes. Quite literally combating crap. Yeah. That I think yeah. About yes. We're talking about bottoming. So we're combating crap in, uh, you know, metaphorically, physically, literally. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I really like that background that you're sharing that you are, you've been cooking for two decades daily because I yeah. think that- that in and of itself makes a lot of sense. It, it comes through when I see your passion for your recipes. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. And I think that pairing that with reproductive rights is the most authentic way that you can create content that you want to create. 
absolutely. Because I feel that if sex ed was even half where it was where it needs to be in the school system, that queer sex ed would not be where it needs to be still. And because of the nature of bottoming, there is a major culinary aspect yes. and gut health aspect that goes into bottoming. And like for real, I just really don't think that even if sex ed was where it needs to be, it would not include that. Like it, it just was a light bulb moment for people when they landed on my page. Like, oh yeah, food really matters for yeah, this. Totally. And I think even as, you know, a sexually fluid educator myself, but mostly, you know, not been discussing anal sex or not having anal sex personally, I'm sure that that really biases my own sex education. And so I'm really glad to be able to talk to you about this today because it's not only your lived experience, but because you have this experience with other queer people and namely, you know, I don't know if a majority of your audience are cis men or people with penises. I'm sure we can get into that, but I think that it's really important to have Uh, a speaker on behalf of buttholes everywhere who (laughs) have anal sex, who, you know, everything there is to know about bottoming, which is why this is a whole kind of anal sex bottoming related episode today. Work. Um, That's what I'm here for. You're in. And for that reason, (laughs) you're in. Uh, Yes. So let's start from the beginning, you know, from from what is bottoming, right? Like we want to know from you, what does that word mean? Tell us the queer lingo that you're referring to. Let's make it accessible to all. Yeah, totally. So bottoming, funny enough, bottoming can be a verb or a noun. There are people that totally like identify as a bottom. I try to use it as both. I try to, I'm trying to move funny enough away from using it as a noun so much because that puts people in boxes. But in the verb sense, in the most literal verb sense, it just refers to being on the receiving end of anal sex, aka the person being penetrated. So this really doesn't have anything to do with masculinity, femininity, who's who in the relationship, nothing like that. It's just simply a matter of sexual desire and preference. Right. So it's like, do you got a butthole? You can bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. It, it, there's a lot of them. Uh, lot <laughs> FYI, of them there's, a, there's a lot of buttholes on this planet. So <laughs> That's just the most literal sense of bottoming, but in the noun sense, like there are people that definitely like, I am a bottom. This is my 100% sexual preference. This is all I want. But there's lots of people that just want to bottom that don't identify as being a bottom. Yeah, totally. And when you first started the Bottoms Digest, you as a queer person, were you kind of coming from this idea of there's not really content like this out there and therefore I need to make it or what what was kind of like the beginnings of the bottoms digest yeah so a couple things really like I said I've been cooking for two decades so um I lost my virginity I've been I was very blessed to grow up as an openly gay person and I lost my virginity when I was 16 to a man. So I guess to a teenager. Sure. Not, I don't, to I'm a not teen trying to boy. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Um, but I lost my virginity when I was 16. And I think that I was lucky back then because I probably cooked for myself that day. I probably didn't go to Taco Bell or something. I probably just made myself lunch or dinner. Or I don't really remember what time of the day I lost my virginity. But I think that plays a major aspect. But I think my biggest inspirations for starting the channel was number one, I am my customer. I personally prefer to bottom in the bedroom. I am a verse bottom, but bottoming is what I go for the most. It's just what I like. And I love to cook. I like to eat and I like to get fucked. So guess what? I'm not really willing to give up any of those. And I never have, and I never will. And Like, I didn't even find out about douching until I was 22. I had been having anal sex for six full years at that point, having never really, having never really douched. So the second biggest inspiration was when I actually, funny enough, lived in New York City. When I lived in New York, uh, my husband and I had to reevaluate our budget uh, for obvious reasons. And meat in the city we lived in Manhattan and meat in the city was so expensive. I could not believe it. So we didn't cut it out of our diets completely, but we did cut meat out of our diet about half of the week. And we went more plant-based. And I was immediately seeing the results in both the bathroom and the bedroom, having a more plant-based diet. So I was more regular. 
I was getting way more natural fiber. I wasn't having to take fiber supplements as often. Fiber supplements still fill in the gap, which is great, but it's better to get it from natural fiber when possible. But that was making prep a snatch. Um, and with just a little bit of ingenuity, oh God, I can never say that word. I'm from the <laughs> South, y'all. Don't give me, a, you have to remind. I also am like, I usually wear Invisalign, so my tongue slips up. <laughs> but with a little bit of ingenuity. You got it. <laughs> I didn't feel like I was really sacrificing. I was trying to make these dishes taste as close as possible to the original so when I was making like my vegan cheese sauce, I wanted something that replicated like trailer park Velveeta cheese like sure. that I grew up on. Um, so that was kind of the goal there was to make these things taste as close as possible to the original and not like vegan options. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of when I was like, wow, this could really help a lot more people. It's never really about giving up stuff. It's not really about like, oh, go vegan, go vegan. It's really just about getting more plant diversity into your lifestyle and getting more plant diversity into your day to day so that you have an overall happier gut and overall happier time bottoming and preparing to bottom and stuff like that. Absolutely. And I think like a, a couple things that I want to say off the back of that. One, I really like that you use humor to really disarm <laughs> yeah. people. Like you start your videos with like, hey, you starving sluts. Are you trying to eat yeah. the best mac and cheese <laughs> your goddamn life? Like who doesn't want to see that video? It's very funny. Your video editing skills and the way that you shoot Thank it, you. it's phenomenal. So just like hats off to you for that. But I really like this idea of, hey, like we don't want you to be giving anything up. I think there is this whole idea of, oh, you need to not eat at all or just, oh, like I'm totally. just eat, like Ugh. eating ice cubes. Tired. Like I've seen, yeah, videos of you saying that. So tired. And I think that that whole idea does feed into, no pun intended, the <laughs> horribleness of diet culture in general, right? There's yeah, this idea absolutely. of like, you have to starve yourself. Don't eat anything if you're going to get intimate with somebody else. And it's just not healthy to think of it like that. And it doesn't taste good no. to do that. So I love that about your stuff. Thank you so much. I, that again comes back from my my intersection of my back my previous careers in politics and reproductive rights and in bartending when I was a bartender my tips would double the sassier I was all night I'd be like here's your goddamn drink asshole and they would tip me twenty dollars <laughs> really but if I was like here's your drink it'd be five bucks or something sure. so uh, especially with the drag queens the shadier I was with the drag queens the more they would love me funny enough so when I was doing this content for the Bottom's Digest, that was super important for me to make it humorous because what I've noticed in reproductive rights was that, yes, we're all pissed. We are all mad about the state of things, but how are you making people digest these things, pun intended, in a more light manner? Mm -hmm. Like how, like some of our favorite teachers that we all remember were some of the funniest teachers True. in elementary, middle school, high school, college. They made it, they broke down that wall immediately and invited you into a world to come learn with them. So that's why it's really funny. It's really important to me to make it funny at all costs. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and and you're right. I think I try to do the same thing with sex ed with DB of like being yeah. silly. Like everyone can relate when they're laughing about something. And especially when we're talking about anal sex, which can be a topic that people might mm -hmm. be really shy about. I know especially straight people, like straight women, maybe that's not their domain as much. So it's really important to kind of break down these barriers, like you said, yeah. and make it accessible to as many people as possible. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, sex is kind of silly. Like it's kind of, a, it's weird. Like it can be intimate and whatnot. Sure. But it's also really silly and dumb sometimes too. Like you're, you're taking this dumb organ and putting it in this it. other organ. Yeah. yeah. Slapping it together. <laughs> Slapping it. And like, I, I always tell people, like some of my friends that ask me about questions about bottoming and stuff, just as friends outside of the channel and stuff. I'm always like, I can't believe we're not laughing more in the bedroom half the time because it's just like, Switching positions half the time can be the most awkward, funny thing. Totally. So it's, you know, just making it funny makes it relatable. Yeah. Too. It just brings it full circle. It, so It really does. You're right. I wonder if you can talk to me a little bit about some myths, maybe like a top, top uh, one or top three that you can maybe dispel for folks when it comes to specifically talking about bottoming and food. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So 
Myth number one is you had just made this comment actually was you got to start before bottoming. My channel proves that that is not the case. In fact, Alex Hall, when he was 16 to 22, proves that that was the case. You, I had never starved. I didn't even know that was a joke until my early 20s. I'm 30 years old right now. And that is just not the case. Um, Dr. Carlton, who's a gay GI doctor based out of California, I love him. We're good friends at this point. We've actually done quite a few articles together at this point with the press. Uh, he talks all the time about the gastrocolic reflex, which is a signal your brain sends to your rectum to empty out when you eat food. And he mentions that if you shouldn't eat 30 minutes to an hour before bottoming, especially if you have IBS, because the gastrocolic reflex is a lot stronger in people that have IBS, which makes a lot of sense when you say these things out loud. But that's definitely not a full last day. So that's myth number one is like, you do not need to starve all day. That is just simply not how digestion works. Mm -hmm. What you're eating right now can take a full day to reach the end of its course wow. <laughs> into the toilet. So it's, there is no reason to starve all day. You, that's why my channel focuses fully on foods that make you feel uncomfortable because gas and bloating can hit you really quick. Yes. Um, if your body does not agree with something, you will know pretty quickly. So that's myth number one. I think myth number two is that certain foods are off limits. And I'm actually reading a book by Tim Spector right now called Food for Life. I love him. He's an epidemiologist, which for people that don't know what that is, epidemiologists investigate patterns and causes of disease and injury in large populations. And Tim Spector he specifically specializes in diet for large populations. Mm. And he's in the United Kingdom. He's British. Um, but what I always like to say is there's 8 billion of us on this planet. That means there's 8 billion goddamn different guts and butts on this planet. True. And Tim Spector, he really talks about the complexity of food and how each one of our guts is truly unique to us. So I've kind of pivoted with the bombs I just in the last year where like I remind people that these are recipes. Everyone knows that recipes are guidelines. You can change a recipe to however you want. There's a reason recipes say salt to taste. Like mm. some of us like salty food. Some of us don't like salty food. Um, and with that being said, some of us react differently to foods. In fact, all of us react very differently to every single food. So take my stroganoff, for example, my stroganoff recipe on the bottom side, Jess. If you are sensitive to mushrooms, leave them out. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes it's that simple to just hone in on an ingredient that you see in a recipe and be like, oh, yeah, my body does not like that thing. The amount of times I'll get a comment and be like, oh, I saw this, ing this recipe you made and there's onions in it. I can't do onions. And I'm like, okay, girl, don't do onions. Just don't. You, like, you're the one that said it. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, leave it out then. And people are like, well, oh my God, but I'll miss the flavor. I'm like, okay, well, you can only lead a horse to water, babe. Um, so, but Tim Spector, he's great. He just, he reminds you that there's a lot of nuance in ingredients and foods. And with what you just said about diet culture, we don't know anything about diet and food. And that's what I really like about Tim Spector is he is a scientist reminding us that we just recently found out about all the chemicals that are in food, um, like the good, the natural chemicals. Mm. Um, so we are still learning about these things. So it's a, rem it's a big reminder, a big thing, a big important thing to remember yeah. that recipes are guidelines. And you need to adapt them to what works for your body. So that was a long myth number two. Yeah, but it's good. My, my favorite about, I think this last one, myth number three, is it's specifically about bottoming rather than food. And that it's about, I actually just posted a video today on my social medias about this. It's um, that when an accident happens in the bedroom, you're supposed to be embarrassed mm. about it. You're like, it's supposed to be this like big thing that everything needs to stop. And like, you're supposed to feel all this shame and all that. But that is absolutely wrong. Accidents will happen. You are literally fucking an ass. <laughs> like I, I cannot, I cannot say it any differently than that. You are fucking a butt. So what my godmother always tells me, she is an East Texas lesbian. She loves Amazing. my channel. She is so proud of it. She always tells me, when I tell her this specifically about the messes in the bedroom and whatnot, 
she always says, don't get in the pool if you're afraid to get wet. Totally. And, that's it. Yeah. And I say it all the time on my channel now. Our, like, our society and media especially never highlights this reality. Like, Brokeback Mountain, that movie, surely, surely they had an accident. There for sure. Surely they had an accident. Two cowboys in the mountains for days and days wow, with fair. no access to plumbing. Let's be fucking real. Wow, you're really like, putting this all in a new perspective for me. Let's be fucking real. Like, he spit in his hand, fucked Jake Gyllenhaal, and then cut. Like, right. that we never, ever, ever see the next part. So that really, it, like... I don't even say accidents can happen. They will happen. Every single person will have (laughs) 1,000. I was like, one accident? That's not enough. One, you'll have plenty. And the only real answer of fixing this is learning how to be more supportive and communicative in Mm. those moments. So that's a good those one. are some of the big myths. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did see your video on this and I really thought it was really funny. You said L O fucking L. If you think that yeah. that's like the worst thing that can happen to you. Yeah. For anyone that's listening, there was just, there was just this guy that posted on TikTok that was like the most embarrassing thing that'll ever happen to a bottom. And it was an accident in the bedroom. And I was like, bitch, there are way more embarrassing. Have you even tried to apply for a home loan? <laughs> in 2023 <laughs> like there's way more embarrassing things like get up get grow up grow up yeah grow up. grow up yeah there's gonna be some poop like and that's okay like that's if you have access to a shower just go ahead and shower it off and maybe yeah talk about it yeah and just kind of it just know that it might happen Seriously. yeah talk about it talking about it is so important like when the whoever's topping and again i'm not i'm not trying to use that language of the top right. whoever's topping when they pull out and they see a little a little poo-poo or a little mess or whatever, they can talk to whoever's body and be like, hey, are you feeling okay? Right. Are you feeling comfortable? Is everything like because that can also be very painful for whoever's bottoming. Mm. So it's important to communicate in those moments, be like, how are you feeling right now? And if they're saying, like, oh, you now that you mention it, it kind of hurts. Mm. That that's a big like major flag right there that you took that time to stop and talk to each other. But Pulling out and seeing a little poop on a condom or your dick if you're going bareback or anything, and then freaking out about it Not is unreal. Yes. Unreal. Totally. You're un- in fact, yeah. go ahead. In fact, you should kick that person out of oh, your goddamn house. Get, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> if you don't like so, my poop, then get now. I mean, yeah, right? it's just, it is a good reminder though that like, hey, if if you're gonna experiment with this, I mean, if, if it's the same, to me, it's really the same thing as thinking about like, if you're gonna have sex on, a, on your period, like, okay, like yeah. there's gonna be blood, there's gonna be discharge, there's gonna be parts of the mm-hmm. uterus that are going to be there. Like you just need to be okay with it. Maybe put down a towel, maybe talk about like what that might feel like or whatever but right. yeah things put down a red towel if you're a really good put down a red... that's genius you know really if you have enough shades of red towels depending on where you are in your cycle can look right like different reds but yeah like or good good point of like if it hurts then maybe stop maybe check in but know that these liquids and and solids potentially are normal yeah. and uh that you should get used to it yeah, like when you take a jar of water and you try to jam something in it and all the water overfills, right. that's happening to your body. Right, totally. <laughs> so that, that's why it hurts. You're having an overflow. It's pressurized. Mm-hmm. It hurts. Right. So it's good to check in. Yeah, and know. good reminder, like use a lot of lube, like make sure you're- Tons. You tons and t- more than you think you need. For real. I'm like, you could never have enough. Right. When people ask me like, endless. well, how much is too much? I'm like, the endless. Right. There is no too much, especially right. with anal sex where you do not get wet. Yeah. There is no such thing as too much. Yeah. Um, in fact, the funny sounds you hear from too much lube, that's a good sign. Right. That means you've used the squeaking. plenty now. Yes, exactly. The squeaking, the like mini fart sounds, mm-hmm. those are perfect. That means you up. are finally using enough. <laughs> Want to win your very own Magic Wand Mini? If so, keep on listening. Ooh, it's kind of fun to have your attention. Okay, but let's get into it. Magic Wand, aka the best-selling wand vibrator of all time, has partnered with Sex Ed with DB to give some Magic Wands away to some lucky winners. How can you participate and enter to win? We want to hear your best Magic Wand story. Maybe something funny or silly comes to mind? 
Maybe the magic wand unlocked a world of pleasure for you like it did for me. Whatever it is, we want to hear your story. Go to sexedwithdb.com slash magic wand to learn more and see how you could win your very own magic wand mini. Let's talk about lube and condoms. Something important to know is that oil-based lube is not to be used with condoms because the oil can cause the condom to break or tear, which would defeat the purpose of using it. Thank goodness for Uber Lube. Uber Lube is latex compatible, so it's safe and effective to use with condoms. But wait, there's more. Dispensing two drops of Uber Lube inside a condom and a measured pump outside will increase pleasure. What are you waiting for? Use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at uberlube.com. I'm sure you've heard the phrase bottoming before, but do you really know what it entails, pun intended? When it comes to anal sex, there's typically a top and a bottom, and any combination of the two. The top is defined as the insertive partner, and the bottom is defined as the receptive partner. If you're interested in anal play or bottoming, the three major muscles in our butt need to be relaxed for complete and successful entry. After you've started to experiment with the tip of a finger or a butt plug with lots and lots of lube, you may want to slowly graduate to a pre-bottoming anal training routine to ensure the best experience. Enter the glass anal dilator set with three gradual dilators, small, medium, and large plugs from Future Method. And an important fun fact, an anal surgeon designed these glass dilators so you know that he's got your back and your bottom. To learn more about bottoming and the glass dilator set, go to futuremethod.com and use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at checkout. Let me tell you about one of my favorite pleasure product retailers out there, Lion's Den. If you haven't heard about Lion's Den before, I can't wait to tell you about them. Lion's Den opened its first retail facility in Columbus, Ohio in 1971. That's right, over 50 years ago. Since then, they've grown to more than 50 outlets throughout the US, building their reputation on high quality products, low prices, and a knowledgeable sales staff who can help you find the perfect toy. One of the many things I love about Lion's Den is that they advocate for a sex positive perspective on intimacy and sexual well being, and strive to break the stereotypes and stigma surrounding sex by providing comprehensive educational resources to empower everyone to enjoy life to the fullest. They are simply amazing. Lucky for you, Lion's Den is giving my listeners an exclusive discount of 15% off your purchase in store and online with code SEXED with DB at lionsden.com. What are you waiting for? Get your amazing Lion's Den toy now. Transitioning from poop to food, um, as you do. um, (laughs) Every day. Every day. uh, I'd love for you to talk to me about some of your favorite recipes that you created and so hard i also want to talk about maybe the process because i know that we've talked separately about this and your process for testing these recipes is really really amazing so i'd love for you to to shout that out yeah for sure so oh when people ask me what's my favorite recipe it's so hard i have like over 60 recipes currently now wow. which is crazy to me we've been doing the bomb side just for two years now my husband and i uh, were business partners with the the venture so um i think it would have to be my very first recipe Aww. which was my alfredo um i actually chose that recipe intentionally and now i have like a I have like a media breadcrumb trail of this recipe being on. <laughs> so like uh-huh. everyone could be like, okay, Alex has chosen this recipe every time, but it really is my favorite. Um, so it's my Alfredo recipe. The Italians roll in their graves every time I bring this up because Alfredo is not a real Italian recipe, right. but I never said it was. Yeah. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Um, so Alfredo is actually the first recipe I learned how to cook for my mom, mm. the real Alfredo, the very devi- dairy heavy mm-hmm. recipe. Um, And for a very long time, I could not make it right. It curdled all the time. I like, it just took me a very long time to learn how to make it right as a child. Um, Because I said I've been cooking for a long time. And when I finally got it right, I I just remember that moment as a kid so well that I remember finally nailing the timing of it all and getting it well done. And when I started the Bong's Digest, or like a few months beforehand anyways, when I was playing with recipes and all that, 
I made a, dairy, a completely dairy-free Alfredo that I had been making for a full year at that point. Mm, and you mastered it. And yeah, like a, it was just, I'm lactose intolerant. I already eat half of the recipes you see on my channel on a normal day. Mm. Um, and the Alfredo I had been eating for a full year before the bombsai just came out. And I made it for my mom and she was just eating it. And she was like, I, I didn't tell her anything was different. And she was like, oh my God, this is the best you've made it. And I was like, girl, it's cauliflower. Oh, I was like, <laughs> you tricked, bitch. Uh, yeah. And so when I, <laughs> which she was like, you're an asshole. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not. Your asshole is going to love me <laughs> for the rest of the week yeah. because this is completely dairy free and amazing. So when I posted that, it, it blew up immediately. I was really gagged because I was excited to start the bomb digest, but I didn't realize how big it was going to pop off right off the bat. Yeah. But I also love that recipe because it opened my eyes to people with IBS. I had not really ever taken into account that community when doing this work. And a lot of people were telling me that they couldn't eat cauliflower oh, wow. because of their IBS. So that created a whole new avenue for the bombs I just where like not every recipe can be IBS friendly, but it made me more aware that, wow, our recipes can quite literally be bottom friendly. Now you can make, we can make recipes for people that aren't even engaging in anal sex. They just want to not have to run to the bathroom after 20 minutes totally. of eating something or want dairy free recipes or low file map recipes, um, which low file map, I won't go into that acronym. It's huge, but it's, those are the foods that people with IBS eat. Okay. Um, it's a type of sugar that in foods that are hard to digest for people with IBS. So cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower have mm. those sugars. Um, so that's why I really like that recipe because it was an eye opener for a whole new lane of dishes and recipes we could create for our community, but also it has a lot of heartstrings for me as one of the recipes I grew up cooking. But um, as far as testing goes, all of our recipes first get tested on me because I have a very sensitive stomach. I'm lactose intolerant as fuck. I have to, if it goes, if it can, will pass through me, like pass through me in a test wise, <laughs> not pass through my body, right. um, then we're good. I will push it along to my test group. So for context, the first year, the bombs I just was in Texas. And when I was in Texas, I had a strong community of queer people. It was a mix of women, trans people, and um, just general queer gay men, stuff like that, that were in my test group. And so I would test the recipe on me, and then I would push it off to them to test for phase two. And if it passed nine out of 10 of them, there were 10 people in the test group. Nine out of I 10, that's high. Yeah, it is high. Um, I wanted it to be high on purpose because this information is not accessible to people currently. And I don't, I'm not rich, so I wish I could be a hundred people, but that's just unfortunately not 10 is right good. Now. I think personally, like hearing that, I think 10 is really high to me. I thank you. And I wanted it, I wanted trans people to be in my um, test group for obvious reasons because I want to make content for trans people as well. But trans people are usually on hormones and and they're on medications and whatnot. So I wanted to see that, make sure that these recipes were still working mm -hmm. with their medications. But also I had women in my test group because I had lesbian women that love to peg each other mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I wanted a diverse test group because that's really what my channel was made for, was for all people that want to bottom. So if it passed nine out of 10 of them, then I would publish it on my channel we moved the bottom digest to Chicago last April. We're hitting a year here now. And the test group has been a little lighter here because we're playing with new ways to test mm. our recipes. Um, and I'm potentially going to start sending my written recipes to people all over and have them not only test the recipe itself, but testing the complexity of it. So was it too hard to make? Because if that was a problem, then we can nix it right away. So that's kind of where we're moving in testing. Right now, I have a very small test group. Um, I'm potentially about to grow it again because um, I have a lot of great followers here in Chicago, and I would love to just start working with them as being a part of our test group. But I would also love to potentially start testing, just sending the recipe to people in other states and other countries and all that. Yeah. 
and ask them to make it and test it on themselves. Ooh, other um, countries is interesting too because if they don't have access to the same exact type of ingredients, 100%. like how, what can they replace it with? 100%. Um, like, for instance, my Italian followers, I have quite a few Italian followers, funny enough, and a lot of them don't have any problems with dairy. Italian dairy is way higher quality. They're, they grew up eating it very consistently, a very high quality product. Um, and they have a much harder time finding the non-dairy products that I push. Interesting. So, you know, if they test my ingredients, if they test my recipes with their whole milk, heavy, uh, high quality Italian dairy products, and they still have no problems and all that, that's a whole new lesson learned there. And we can start to apply that information into our written recipes on our website. But for now, I want to make sure we have the funding before we do stuff like sure. that. Cause I want to pay people for that time right. and pay them for their effort because I don't want to be like, Hey, test this for me for free so I can go benefit from it. Sure, I want to sure. be able to like, so that's kind of like the next phase, but right now we're rebuilding a, a solid test group here in Chicago. Um, taking a lot of the lessons we've learned from our first dozen recipes and applying them. And, you know, while we're still building that test group, we repost older recipes and whatnot. So yeah, that's kind of our process. We try to make it as ethical as possible because this isn't easy to find. It's really awesome. Yeah. I think like you do really do it again. I said this before, but I, I like to cook, but cooking makes me a little nervous. I don't know why. Like, okay, for example, I am, I live in a co-op with my fiance. So we have our own like one bedroom apartment, but we're like on a property and we share, uh, you know, a big kitchen. We have our own kitchen, but we also have a really big kitchen that we like go to dinner That's with. So and cool. there are like 17 people. Right. And you sign wow. up like one to two times. You would be fucking awesome at this, but you sign up like one to two times a month and you cook dinner for everybody for like all uh, 17 people. I'm doing that when I visit. Oh my you. God. You <laughs> really must. I will, you know, we, you know, they cover the cost and everyone pays dues and whatever. And so yes. today, like for example, I'm making, um, veggie pizzas, like me and one other person who's actually awesome. sous chefing for me. I'm like, going to the grocery store, buying it up, you know, thinking about it like, oh, I'm cooking for a party, right? It's like I'm making four right. pizzas or something. And I know that when I'm doing it, it'll be fine. But I think I have this cooking anxiety where I just get nervous totally. that it's going to fucking turn out terrible. Do you have any advice for people like who want to bottom, you know, or not, who want to just like cook better meals for themselves to not have that anxiety? I'm sure other people feel it too. Totally. So breathe more first. Good. Good. Good start. <laughs> breathe, breathe more and start light with technique. Mm. That's so important. So I've been cooking forever. I actually almost went to culinary school a long time ago. Um, and I remember that all the time that not everyone likes to cook like that. Yeah. So I try to remember that when I make my recipes, it's like, don't get crazy. Um, I, I'm sure you saw this on my page the other day. I, I called out a lot of the cooking bros that are just like doing the most. Oh yeah. I saw this guy like making scrambled eggs. He like parboiled the eggs, blended the eggs with cream, put that in a whipper, like a, oh. a whip canister, whipped it out. Like I was just like, just dude, crack it in the pan and put the fucking fuck fork you. in it. Like, <laughs> fuck you. Like the French are rolling in their graves now too. <laughs> like, um, no, 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 no. So start light. Like for me, Making a chicken salad, like a grilled chicken breast on salad, mm -hmm. you learn so many things with that alone. How to cook your chicken breast right. Did you season it ahead of time? How to make a simple salad dressing? How to cut the things that you're putting in your salad, mm -hmm. like cucumber and tomatoes and bell pepper, like dicing techniques. Right. And then you start to realize like, oh, wow, all that anxiety was because of the lack of technique knowledge. Totally. Like, like for the pizzas how am I rolling out this dough? Holy shit. And it's like, no girl, go buy store bought. That's what like, I'm going to do for sure. <laughs> exactly. So like when, when you have, when you start to like realize what the pieces are that are giving you anxiety, you can find shortcuts instead. Yeah. Like, I think that's why like people love Ina Garden, but Ina Garden doesn't make things very accessible. Mm. She's always like, use good olive oil. And it's like, girl, what is good olive oil then? Right. Can you define that? Right. Um, can you give us a definition? So, yeah, the anxiety is just like, take a deep breath, start 
with chill recipes. Simple. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Like I, I think a lot of people are like, "Ooh, I'm gonna make a souffle," and I'm like, "Okay, you literally pick the most complex <laughs> thing right off the bat." Right. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Like a galette is an easy dessert. You buy store bought puff pastry dough. Mm. You roll it out. You crimp the edges up, and you dump fruit in it, Great. and you bake it. Great. Like start simple and if there are a million steps that means it's hard totally (laughs) like that that means it's hard like if there's a million ingredients broken down into multiple sections that means it's hard so those are some some of the most accessible tips is just I know it sounds very like okay I could have thought of that myself but No, no no that is helpful from from someone who cooks a lot and I think to shift back to this whole idea of eating foods that are not only good for your body, but good for your bottoming, if they're wanting to do that, (laughs) what are some foods that maybe someone should avoid completely the, you know, a couple hours before their bottoming? Totally. So I love this question and I've been really rethinking this question when I get it lately, because again, Tim Spector, who I mentioned earlier, Food for Life is his book that I'm reading right now that is just phenomenal. And it's really changing the way I answer this question, funny enough. So With bottoming, I still have some solid answers, but I always preface this. We all have different bodies. Yes. (laughs) Always listen to your body. I really think it's, it's very vital to eat healthy things on days that you know you're not having sex. Like, I know that that's not always not always predictable, of course, but at least you tried and you gave it a shot because then you know how your body reacts to those things. Mm. Because a a lot of the things I'm about to say that you should try to avoid before bottoming, again, if your body doesn't agree with these, is they're very good for you and you shouldn't give them up for good, some of them. So first on that list is cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Um, There are exceptions that I have found like kale doesn't give me any problems, but broccoli dead i'm dead all day i'm out of commission all day it's not happening um but i have found that if i buy organic broccoli not as many problems so that's why it's like it's really nuanced yeah you you need to know these things about yourself but cruciferous vegetables are one of the healthiest things on the planet so you should not give them up for life just to get your freak on like that's that's ridiculous so give them up for the day of if you especially know they cause you problems Um, but if you're not fucking today, you should eat them and see how you react to them. The next one up is for sure dairy. Um, dairy gives a lot of people problems. Again, if you're in other countries, this seems to be a uniquely American problem. Yeah. Cause our farming pump the hormones and yeah, our cows are like a problem here big time. Um, so that's why it's really important to know if it really causes you that kind of problem. But dairy has no fiber in it, no matter where you're living. So that's one of the problem. That's one of the reasons it can be a problem is it can cause a lot of havoc in the prep pro- in the prep arena when you're in the bathroom trying to get ready. But there's of course like exceptions like full fat yogurts and kefir, which is like that fermented milk drink. Um, there seems to be a lot of studies out there that that's really good on your gut health. So. Days you're not bottoming, go for it. You should have those because that's good for your overall health. Mm-hmm. But there are definite red flag ones like artificial sweeteners are a big one. They oh. cause like they cause like gas and bloating in everybody. Interesting. Um, yeah, like Splenda is like a big one. Um, but another one is UPFs, which are ultra processed foods. Um, so I'm going to keep shouting out Tim Spector because I love to shout out scientists and doctors. Like I'm just the, I'm just the slutty the messenger. Whore. I'm the slutty <laughs> the whore slutty chef messenger. that is bringing you the tea. Like I'm just bringing the tea. Love it. Um, I'm bring, bringing the teapot and I'm pouring it into your little teacup. Great. But Tim Spector called, he gives out a really great example of what ultra processed foods start. So take a, take a quart of whole milk. That is not very processed take a thing of yogurt that is plain yogurt that's minimally processed take yogurt that has fake fruit sugar all these colorings all that that's ultra processed so those are like the three layers and you know all the snacks on the shelves like chips and and like the you know just all the junk food really those are all ultra processed foods so 
you have to find like a balance though. Cause it, you know, again, I'm not going to tell you to quit those things for life. Right. Like some people are like, fuck you. I want my chips. And it's like, okay, well that's fine. But like balance it out, right. balance these things out. So ultra processed foods are a really big one to wa- keep an eye out for frozen TV dinners are an ultra processed food. Like things like that are just, you're better off buying a bag of frozen broccoli and cooking the food that would have gone on the sides like you it's better to buy those ingredients all frozen individually and make it at home rather than buying a tv dinner Mm. of it made that's good that is good advice i feel like we we even like you know trader joe's and like i love trader joe's but like and i love their frozen stuff but yeah for sure that stuff is very processed trader joe's is like the king of ultra processed food so like i mean yeah, I'm not going to even go up against that behemoth of a, like, mach- like there's no defeating Trader Joe's. Right. People love it. I love Trader Joe's too, but like countless, yeah, countless a lot snacks. of water products. Yeah. So many. And I mean, like, even when you go like to their peanut butters, there's like one regular peanut butter. And then there's like 20 ultra processed peanut butters that have all these damn flavors totally. and all these things in them. And it's just like, you have to be aware of those because your body will, your gut health will be extremely upset by all of the additives in those foods. And that's what can cause the gas of bloating, diarrhea. It can make your stool not very, fr- like it can cause a lot of problems. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Wow. I'm, I, I've learned so much from you today. So thank you so much for I, being here. Thank you so much. I can't believe how much I know you, about this. It's, it's a, it's, you're a wealth, <laughs> a wealth of knowledge, Thank a you, fountain. Uh, and yeah, I wonder if you can just kind of share like a few, a few more things while we still have you, which is absolutely. What do you, what do you really hope that people like ultimately walk away with when, when they are kind of seeing your content and understanding what you're teaching them and how do you think it's hopefully changed the way that people think about eating and bottoming wow i love this question because i i I take this into account honestly every day Mm. when i create something and i think that especially like about a year ago when i i had hit my one year mark with the bottom side jess and i was really like figuring out okay how do i want to keep doing this content because i don't want to make every video about just bottoming at this point where I'm I'm like, Oh, I've even asked my audience, like, do y'all want recipes for days that you're not bottoming? And that's been overwhelmingly a yes. And like things that are just overall good for you and healthy. Uh, And I think the biggest thing that I want from my audience is just to gain a stronger sense of self and a stronger sense of like, what foods make me feel like that bitch? What foods make me feel awful? Mm. Am I willing to feel awful every once in a while because I love that food? Like the fact that you're even asking yourself those questions, that's, you know, you're already becoming more in tune with yourself. And like RuPaul says, I know this is corny, but if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love yourself? (laughs) So like, if you can't ask yourself these questions and communicate with yourself how you're feeling and all that, How the hell are you going to communicate with a partner in the bedroom that you're not feeling comfortable, you're not enjoying something? Like taking that time to communicate with your internal thoughts about how something's making you feel is a vital step. So that's kind of what I want my channel to to really teach people is like to evaluate recipes and be like, oh, this thing doesn't work for me. I'm going to swap that out with something else. That is a huge win right away. Totally. Because... You're already doing my number one goal, which I do not preach about constantly because then it'll make it preachy is to not starve before bottoming. Like that is so harmful and it's, it's just made up. I know it's made up in our community and it's honestly because of toxic white (laughs) patriarchal masculinity. Like Mm -hmm. the list goes on. It's, it's all because of that bullshit. And, and I just want to combat that so so much the fact that you can enjoy food and sex like and there is should. no reason you should. you should in fact if you don't you will die <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> like if you don't eat 
there is scientific you evidence it. that you don't live. You need it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I've heard. You need it. You need it. And yeah. You, so and food is special, right? Like it really brings people together. <sighs> it can make you feel really good. It can make you feel so much pleasure and joy. And it's just, it's fun. It's great. It's so special. It kills me because people, especially like I, I'm honing on gay men for this one particular part. They make these dumb ass jokes about starving mm. before bottoming, but then go to brunch mm. and have some of the best memories of going to drag brunches. And I've seen you bitches eating at these drag brunches. So don't <laughs> fucking don't joke. <laughs> and that is important. Like it's fun to like go and do these and eat together and get drunk together and all that. And I know a lot of them are bottoming afterwards. Let's be real. Totally. So these jokes about starving beforehand. They're extremely harmful. And when someone, if I was 16 and I had landed on TikTok with this joke about starving beforehand, I may have thought that that was what I had to have done. Totally. I may have thought that that was actually a requirement in order to do so. Right. So that is why I just really want my channel to just destroy that myth. Yes. And uh, yeah, again, I just... I love your content so much. It's so wonderful. Thank I'm you. so lucky to know you as a friend now. And oh. I wonder if you could just share, you know, like, what are you kind of working on next? And where can our followers find you? Yeah. So hopefully working on a cookbook next. Yeah. I've been in talks with a cookbook, um, a book agency for a minute now. Amazing. But y'all know how it goes. These contracts are long. Take forever. And I know. I'm like, ugh like come on just send a one pager it's a fucking but whatever um so hopefully a cookbook that's been very demanded from my audience and i love it my background as a graphic designer that's gonna be super fun to do so i cannot wait but you know just a really campy sex ed cookbook um i'm also revitalizing my youtube currently um if you're familiar with like strangers or uh people of new york oh yeah um I really want to do something similar, but like it meets Pit Stop from Drag Race where it's like um, a drag queen sitting across from another drag queen interviewing oh, them. amazing. I really want to meld those worlds together with my YouTube and really start bringing other people, famous and not famous, that are that bottom. And I want them to come on and talk to me about their experiences, their, their times combating shame, what they've done to laugh off stuff, what they've done to not laugh off stuff. Like, so that it's not just me all the time talking to people. I want, I really want people to start seeing other perspectives. So you should call um, it get to the bottom of it. Yes. Oh my God. So I know like, thank you for that because we had a great name and then we found out it was taken. Oh, um, if you, and that happens. Take, please. That yeah. Happens. Think on it. Uh, I'll send you some royalties. <laughs> don't you worry. Um, and then, so like, I just really want to be so much more collaborative in the next ongoing future. Like, it's been super fun for the last two years, but it's called the Bottoms Digest, not Alex's Digest. So I'm really just trying to get back to being the host of the Bottoms Digest, mm-hmm. where I talk to a lot of other people. Um, and maybe even a podcast down the road. Oh, Who knows? Oh, so that'd be amazing. That's been highly requested, too. So I think that that'll be a really great space to also, again, talk to a lot of people about what they've done. I think it'd be fun to do a podcast where we talk about the times we've quite literally had to check people that were topping. Yeah. Um, so you, on that note, you can catch me on TikTok at bottom side, Jess. You can catch, catch me on Instagram at bottom side, Jess. Same with my YouTube. My website is the bottom side, Jess.com. That's where all my recipes live. I'm about to put resources up on my website a lot more. Um, and yeah, I'm also on Twitter, but God knows where the fuck Twitter is going to be in the next year. <laughs> so you it's can follow me there. there. Yeah, you can follow me there. But to be honest with you, I've been a little hesitant um, because Elon is not making it easy on us. No, so. it's a very scary world there. But nonetheless, maybe yeah, he should try bottoming. It would. Make- it would. Ma- <laughs> yeah, maybe he should. <laughs> maybe we should write into him and let him know that. Uh, well, Alex, Shove a Tesla up his ass. <laughs> On that very strange and unexpected note, (laughs) Alex, thank you so much for being on. This has been so wonderful chatting with you. I really appreciate it. Yay. Thank you so much, Danielle. You're the best. I appreciate it. Our creator, host, and executive producer is me, Danielle Bezalow. Our producer and communications lead is Catherine Cohen. 
Our associate producer and communications coordinator is Sadie Luigi. Our marketing coordinator is Kate Fiala. Our music theme is by Hook Sounds. Thanks so much to our featured guests, partners, and listeners. Want to partner with us? Email us at sexedwithdb at gmail.com. For more sex ed content, follow us on Instagram at sexedwithdbpodcast and on TikTok at sexedwithdb. For exclusive content and to submit an anonymous sex ed question, check out my new podcast on Fridays, Curious Sex Ed, hosted with Mariah Caudillo of Sex Ed Files. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash curiouss sex ed to learn more. See you next time.